Hi, I'm Bernadette from Migration Matters. If you read the newspaper, it seems to be an inseparable pair. So irregular migration is basically caused by smugglers. And this means if we would fight smuggling, we could really fight irregular migration. But I was wondering, is it that simple? And of course it's not. What we are trying to do in this clip is to bring you a perspective that is hardly heard. We talked to researcher Nazi Majidi and she does a lot of her research in countries of origin, such as Afghanistan, Syria, Eritrea, Somalia. And when you talk to people there, of course the way how they perceive a smuggler is totally different to what we think smugglers are here in Europe. So listen what she has to say. So the reason why we hear more and more about the smuggler is because it's become the face of a problem. Uh, for European governments it's easier to demonize a smuggler than to demonize a refugee or a migrant. So it's very useful to have a face to put on a problem. It's, it's highly likely that by doing so you can more easily um, push uh, policies against, against migration and irregular migration. There is like a relation between irregular migration, smuggling and human trafficking. And you have to be careful to not mix it all up. Per definition, human trafficking always goes along with violence and exploitation of the victim. Whereas smuggling just purely first and foremost means a kind of transportation service. So smuggling is bringing people from one area to another where there is no direct way for them to make this journey. So it's more considered as a service that doesn't go along necessarily with violence or abuse. So it's really hard to put myself in this situation, but what if I would live in Afghanistan these days and I really want to escape um, an area of conflict and I know that I need to get out of the country. There is no legal way for me to do so. And I would rely on this kind of, yeah, call it travel service. So where to look for smugglers? Um, how would I find someone? And could it be that a smuggler could even be my neighbor? I definitely know of smugglers who go on social media, who go on Facebook to try to recruit potential migrants. They speak to youth and try to convince them to leave. So it's true that in some cases they can generate a demand. But beyond what we hear in the media and beyond what we hear from the governments, which is usually that smugglers are criminals, uh, that they're predators, that they're dangerous, that it's like a mafia, what we need to look at is the country of origin perspective. In those countries, um, smuggling is not a big economic or criminal organization. It's not an organized crime. It's actually a social practice. There's a social organization behind smuggling. From Afghanistan to Somalia, everyone will tell you in their neighborhood, in their village, in their city, that they know of a smuggler. The smuggler is a distant relative, a friend, somebody they've known for years. The smuggler can be a returnee who's come back and his only job and his only way to use his migration in any positive way is to help others get through the migration journey. So let's take the smuggler who I met in Afghanistan, Shingul. Shingul uh, started working as a smuggler uh, because he had no other job to do in Afghanistan. He was himself a refugee in Pakistan. He then became a migrant in Iran. So he lived in all those countries in the region close to Afghanistan through which people have to go through to get to Europe. He decided to start helping out some friends to get to Iran for work. Then from Iran to help them get to Europe. Little by little, he started organizing the journeys for them. He did it physically, going with them through the borders. He got arrested in Iran, ended up being in prison for four years. That deterred him from doing it physically, but he continued managing smuggling routes uh, just on his phone through SMS. For him, it was a way of helping people out of the misery that they were in in Afghanistan. He did not want to do this job, and for him, it had 
a shameful component to him. He was ashamed of being a smuggler, but he did it because he did feel that it was responding to a demand that he was providing a service. Smugglers fill the gap where there is no other legal service available. They prefer to call themselves travel agents, helpers, handlers. People, migrants, prefer to refer to them as their brothers. One uh, Somali migrant whom I spoke with uh, told me that the smuggler is their passport. When their real passport doesn't give them access to countries, smugglers do. So there's a positive image of the smuggler, the one that is helping migrants leave situations that they need to leave. So it's very different from the discourse we hear here in Europe. The access to legal recourses is very complicated for Afghans. Um, and it is the same in other countries around the world. Today, if you're an Afghan wanting to go to the UK, you have to actually put your um, visa application in Islamabad. Now that's a hurdle uh, that's very difficult. You have to go to Pakistan to be able to, to make your demand to go uh, to the UK. So why not have that legal pathway available in Afghanistan for people to be able to put their visa claims to, uh, to the local consulate. So providing legal ways just means more simply to make visas accessible and demands for visas accessible to all. So actually you have two possibilities. Either you have a passport or you have a guy that brings you from one country to the other as a kind of alternative passport. When I did some research, I found out that this is actually a really powerful document. It's an Austrian passport and it grants me access to 169 countries. If it wouldn't be the Austrian one, but the Afghan, the situation wouldn't be that privileged. It would be 23 countries that I would be allowed to go to. It's countries like Cambodia, Guinea-Bissau, some Caribbean islands. So not the first place you think of. And here these guys come in again because Because they know which countries to go to. They know where there actually might be perspectives for me as a refugee. The demand for smugglers uh, started increasing as borders were getting tougher to get across. Smugglers are not what is causing migration. What is causing migration in irregular ways is the fact that they have no regular ways to migrate. The reason why migration and smuggling are such an inseparable pair is because we don't talk about legal ways how to escape conflict areas. And obviously, there is no discussion about how accessible or, most importantly, how unaccessible visas are for most of the people in the world. You don't think of that if you live in Germany, for example, but it gets a very crucial fact if you are in Afghanistan and want to leave and can't. So if you like what uh, we are doing, just subscribe, click on the next uh, clip or even better, share with your friends and colleagues.